Radio Kansas, made possible by contributions from listeners like you. The time now is 6 o'clock. Thank you, everybody. Today is Monday, July 29th. It is 6 p.m. Um, I'd like to thank everybody coming for our special meeting today. If I can get a call to order and a roll call, please. Mayor Shirley. Here. Commissioner Blanchard. Here. Commissioner Crawford. Here. Commissioner Hardy. Here. Commissioner Householder. Here. Okay, hey, thank everyone that's able to to stand up and do the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. With our special meeting, we'll go ahead and move on to administration is what we're here for. Item 3.1, Health Department Settlement Agreement and Release with Saline County. Mr. Bankston. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioners, uh, with regard to the first item and with my apologies to the audience, uh, I would ask that we have the opportunity to uh, recess into an executive session. I believe 10 minutes will suffice, but it would be for the purpose of communications with, uh, privileged communications with council. Okay. Did, did you ask for 10 minutes or 10 minutes? Yes. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, I move to recess into executive session for 10 minutes to discuss with legal counsel matters subject to the attorney client privilege and for the reason that public Discussion of those matters would waive the privilege and adversely affect the city's interest in the matter and reconvene at 6.12 p.m. Second. I have a motion and a second to go into executive session. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we expect any, any outcome of this? Well, there will certainly be some discussion. Some okay. direction. All right. We yes. are in executive session for 10 minutes track and we have that estimate from uh, I would move to recess into executive session for 10 additional minutes 10 minutes to discuss with legal counsel matters subject to the attorney client privilege for the reason that public discussion of those matters would waive the privilege and adversely affect the city's interest in the matters and reconvene at uh, 627 second I have a motion and a second to recess back into executive session for an additional 10 minutes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We're back in executive session. Uh, but, you know, when, when I go down there, you know, er, they, you know, they have this thing called scansiety when, you, when you're a cancer patient and before you. All right. We are back from executive session. Thanks, everybody, for their patience. Um, as a request from the health department, we uh, had this meeting today just so everyone can come up and let us know or have any questions or statements, issues they would like to bring forward uh, as per requested by the health department. So at this time, we would open the floor to comments from everybody, but also do, keep in mind. We need to, I think we may need to modify that. We may, because we already had 3-1 on the table. Is that correct? Yes, and I'm sorry, uh, Mayor, if I may. I'm sorry, yes, I do think, um, uh, based on, and I appreciate the chance to visit with you and appreciate everyone's patience. Uh, may I suggest that you uh, table item 3.1 uh, to be uh, considered later in your meeting so okay. that you can proceed with uh, item 3.2. So. Okay, okay I, then I, I, I would move the table 3.1 and move 3.2 up and readdress uh, 3.1 at the conclusion of our 3.2 uh, remarks. Second. A motion and a second to table item 3.1 and move 3.2 above 3.1. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We will go on to 3.2. And just uh, real quick to keep in mind with the matter of time tonight, we do have a full house, so I would like a chance for everybody to speak. So if we can keep the comments or questions under five minutes, that would be appreciated. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Unless you need longer. <laughs> yes. I don't think I will. <laughs> First of all, I know this was your Monday off, and I appreciate setting this special session for us. And those, um, at, those at home, we do need your name and your address. Oh, yes. I'm Yvonne Thank Gibbons. You. I'm the director of the health department, and I live at 2113 Northwood. On behalf of the health department staff and the board, I want to thank you for listening to us this past year with our concerns about the building at 125 West Elm 
We felt the support from you and certainly your interest in improving the building situation. If I had known what repercussions it would have caused at the time, I would have not have mentioned space issues. I had no idea what it would become. And again, thank you for your support. I'd like to refer to the fourth paragraph from the letter dated July 16th by Mike Montoya, County Counselor, to Greg Bankston, City Attorney. The paragraph states that, specifically, if it is the intention of the county to relocate the health department back to the existing building, would the City of Salina be willing to enter into a joint resolution acceptable to both parties to govern the continued operation of the health department? And then I would like to refer to the second paragraph from the letter dated July 24th by Greg Bingston, City Attorney, to Mike Montoya, County Counselor, in response to the July 16th letter. Quote, the City Commission has advised me that they remain in the belief that the existing building does not provide adequate space and functionality for the needs of the Health Department and, therefore, wish to pursue an interlocal agreement for the joint operation of the Health Department only upon the basis of a commitment by the County to jointly identify, purchase, and renovate an, existi an existing structure as an alternative to a new structure suitable to the needs of the Health Department. As it stands, the Health Department feels that what is most important to them at this time is to remain as a joint city-county health department with a joint city-county board of health, whatever that may be, in our local or through a joint resolution. The majority of our clients are Salina citizens, and the city has a strong history of supporting public health. Other advantages of a joint city-county health department, more funding security, continuity of board members that have a total of nine years if they desire to serve, um, and uh, whereas commissioners come and go. Public health shouldn't be a political pawn. We are asking to have the building issue be taken off the table. We didn't expect that a year later there would be the fallout that has taken place. Our staff is already looking at ways to make some adjustments as we consider the move. It isn't what we wanted, but we are willing to concede that issue. The joint venture in my 40 years has worked very well for us and for the community. The joint city-county board of health has worked. We have excellent board members who represent a broad, broad spectrum of the community who have a good understanding and commitment to the fundamental principles of, fun, fun, of uh, public health. I can't thank them enough for this past year, and particularly Dr. Trent Davis, who has supported us through all of this, who happens to be in Toronto today. In summary, we are asking the city to commit to joint support of the city-county health department and to accept the repair of the old building. I will be meeting with the county in the morning to again ask for some flexibility and minor remodeling that could benefit us as we plan the move back. I certainly understand that this is only one of the many joint issues that the city and the county have dealt with and continue to do so, and it wasn't our intent to be one of those. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Hi, Laura Lee Tibbetts, 1431 Austin Circle. I'm the CFO of the Health Department. I'm going to hand out some cost information with regard to the health insurance, and then I will explain it. I know some of you have already seen these numbers, but some of you haven't, so I wanted to take this opportunity to um, explain these numbers. The Salinas Lane County Health Department staff have health insurance coverage through the city. The city's health insurance rate is significantly lower than the county's, and these cost projections show the additional cost that will be incurred by the county for their portion to cover the health department staff. The health department currently has 42 staff who are insured. So if we just compare apples to apples, you'll see that 42 staff on the city insurance cost $300,288. 42 staff on the county insurance cost $541,727. The additional employer cost to cover the same staff is $241,438. The county only insures employees who are full-time. Nine of our covered staff are part-time. Five of those nine are 90%. They work 36 hours per week. Four of those nine are 80%, and they work 32 hours per week. 
That reduces the 42 staff who are currently eligible for health insurance to 33. 33 staff on city insurance would cost $251,136. 33 staff on county insurance would cost $439,859. The additional employer cost to cover the same staff is $188,723. Commissioner John Price suggested it might be possible to move these nine part-time staff to full-time to allow these staff to continue to receive insurance. The additional cost to do that in just in 2014 would be $65,395. That would be for salaries and benefits. But then you would be back to the original amount of $241,438 additional for health insurance. Currently we are covering all 42 staff on the city plan for $300,288. On the county plan covering only 30, 33 of these full-time staff, the cost is $439,859. The employer cost is still $139,571 more per year for nine less staff. Moving the health department staff to the county health insurance plan is going to be a significant increase in cost to the employee as well. The cost per year for the employee for a family plan on the city coverage per year is $2,628. The cost per year for the employee for a family plan on the county coverage is $6,051. The employee will now be paying $3,423 more a year for health insurance. That is more than double what they are currently paying. Additionally. There are four full-time staff who currently do not carry insurance due to the cost. The county provides the single plan at no cost to the employee, so I'm going to assume that these four staff will be enrolling in the single policy plan. This changes the projected cost to the county once again. So there would be 42 staff on the city insurance the way we stand. That is $300,288. We have now increased the number on the county plan to 37 because we are adding four people at a single cost. 37 staff on, a county, on the county insurance would cost $479,605. The additional employer cost to cover five less staff is $179,317. So to me, the realistic number to look at for projecting long-term additional expense based on current rates is $179,317. That is an additional cost based on the current rates. That is the additional cost per year as, as far as I can tell indefinitely. So in five years, that additional cost will add up to $896,584. In 10 years, this additional cost would be $1,793,100. $167. In 15 years, just this additional cost is going to be an expense of $2,689,751. These additional expenses, in my opinion, are just not necessary. I do have the backup documentation with regard to these numbers, if you would like them. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> but these are ours we to keep. They, they are yours, okay, but I do I, have we made the, notes on them. So. The dummy sheet's easier for me anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I, I, I believe you. I believe you. Is there, did you have anything else? Because I was just going to comment. I, if you have any questions, I would certainly be happy to answer. It just, I think, is very interesting. And, and again, these are part of the aspects that I think sometimes the at-home players don't get, is that just in the increased cost here, with the original 500000 that the county had set aside and the 500000 we offered, just the increased cost of insurance and that 500000 we each agreed, there's our new health department building. And what are we getting for it? We're not gaining any service. We're not getting anything else. We're just spending, well, we're not. Taxpayers are. I mean, which, which we all are. But I mean, it, I, just, I think this is an excellent form. And I, and I was here when you guys spoke to the county. Mm -hmm. I think there was some confusion on their part to what these numbers were really going to add up and mean, and I didn't think they could make the jump from A to B, but I think it's pretty clear here that... I think it's a really good breakdown. Yeah. We're throwing, yes. we're throwing money away. And covering less staff. Yeah. Right. Correct. And costing staff more. 
Now, of course, yes. it'll, it'll come back that we caused this because we walked away, but we'll, we'll try and address that later. But I guarantee you that's what they'll say. Well, that's extra money because the city's walking away. But we'll, we'll try and cover that as we go through the evening. So, Thank you. I did just want to present the information with regard to just apples to apples, dollar, dollar for dollar. Thank yeah, you. well, I think your numbers are actually re probably relatively conservative down here. Yeah. That could be the case. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dr. John Adams. I'm the dentist that represents um, the Board of Health and also Trent Davis is out of town, so I would be uh, maybe speaking on his behalf. Uh, to me, the health department has been part of my life for 38 years. I've been a dentist in Salinas since 1975, and I joined the health department board in 76, and uh, I'm due to go off in another year and a half, but this has actually been my family. And if we look at this as a family that is extremely effective, presenting their goal of providing health services to the community, we're looking at a couple of parents, and I want to identify who's which parent, the good parent, the bad parent, but I feel like we're kind of trapped in a divorce system where we, the kids, are getting hosed around a little bit, and we're wanting to stay in our own environment. We don't want to lose our friends. We don't want to be dragged off to another community. But the health department's strength has been not only the community involvement through the city and the county, but the staff that are working there. And when we lose the input from the city, and we would do, say go to a county-only health department, I, I think we have a little more one-sided opinion about everything, and it's not going to be as effective. <coughs> Certainly the program that they're promising they're not going to cut next year could certainly be on the table. And when you uh, vote for a tax increase or you vote to take the fluoride out of the water or put it in, it can always be easily reversed by a vote the next time there's an election. However, you disband this health department system and you're going to lose these 45 people who aren't just right out of college who can't even be educated in a college system the way they have learned through experience. So as children that are begging their parents to reconcile, we don't know the details of the money. We don't know the personality issues that seem to be going on. But if you could not dissolve this health department resolution for the city and the county and you could force them to go to the table, if it's just about a crappy building that they're wanting to spend way too much money on, that doesn't seem like a good reason to get divorced. And I would ask you to consider doing that. I know that the staff has concerns about their vacation time and their insurance and all those numbers, and you guys seem to be the good parents in this situation that understands and is willing to do that, but I just hope that there's some way that you could actually continue to combine your service and force the county to come to their senses or figure out a better system than just going the way they seem to be headed. Thank you. Thank you, John. I don't think you're the only one that wishes we could force them to the table. I think there's probably five of us. I like your analogy of <clears throat> the kids trying to pick because I feel like, from what I've witnessed, the county has used you as pawns for perceived political gain and and I think that's half the hold up here I think all along we've made it real clear our support and we're trying to do things strategically to place us in a way to, to, to best help you all and I think that politics is not entered into anything that any of us have done up here we just want what's best for you and what's best for our community we're not up here making statements about money we know things are expensive we know taxpayers like things cheap I want my taxes to be lower just like the next guy but I know we're going to spend more money on an old building that's just throwing taxpayers' money away, and it's done for political gain. It's to impress a few people from probably not even in this county. Thank you, John. Do we have anybody else I'd like to come up and speak? Hi, I'm Rob Freelive. I live at 835 Highland. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the CEO of the Salina Family Health Care Center and the program director at the Smoky, uh, Smoky Hill Family Medicine Residency Program. I don't have a vested interest in the health department. I'm not on the board. Uh, they don't pay my salary or I'm not having to worry about what's going to happen with my benefits and things like that. 
but as a healthcare provider in town, um, I do greatly appreciate the incredible quality that we have in, in health department, in our health department. And um, I think in large part that is because of the structure and function and the way it's worked um, up until now. Um, I agree there is an opportunity here from a building standpoint to really think a lot bigger than what is happening currently um, and to look towards the future. Uh, I, I liken it to there's an opportunity to, to do something somewhat similar to what's going on with the Donovanier Children's Center. I mean, mm -hmm. there are a lot of agencies that serve the same population, including ours, um, that there, there's a, a real opportunity here. But uh, that aside, I think, uh, like everybody else has already spoken towards, I, I think the most important thing really is trying to maintain the health department in the structure and function that it is now. Um, and that, that to me is the imperative. So, thanks. Thank you. Well, I know there's got to be somebody else out there. <laughs> I have a room full here. <laughs> All these tall Caucasian people. <laughs> Anyway, I thought um, you were going to look out for the Caucasians, weren't you? <laughs> Don't attack me, y'all. I'm that just was, kidding. That was part of your campaign prompts. <laughs> anyway, I did a little study and research on the health care, I mean, building right there. And it's not safe at all. It's geometrical wise, it's wrong. It wasn't built right. So whomever responsible for, you know, built the building and whatnot should come back in to Salina with face value, build it for free. Because if I go to a store and I purchase something and it's damaged and it's not done right, I, I, take, my, 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 I, I take my receipt and my item back to the store and they give me back my money. So therefore, if you built this, the Salina Health human re place there, you need to come back with face value and do it for free. And that's my only thing. And the um, county people, especially um, uh, Mr. Duncan, we have an another competitor. Here it is, Ben Frick. Be very afraid. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that, might be, that could be a campaign slogan. Yeah. Ben Frick, be very afraid. He, you know, <laughs> this next time around, he might be. He might have a chance. <laughs> this, yeah. He was here earlier. Where did he go? I know. Yeah. I, I don't know where. Yeah, had to go home. Uh, Getting signatures. I was here when you gave him that shirt. <laughs> yeah, it was. That's an old antique shirt right there. That's vintage, I guess we call it. That's uh, when Randy ran the first time. Yeah. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to uh, come up and talk about? I see a few of you with books and yeah, notepads, please. <laughs> Feel free to come up. Glenn England, 2864 North Halstead Road. Uh, I'm the veterinary representative on the, the health board. And uh, I think I just want to reiterate what John and, and Yvonne have said here that you know, as we talk about this and we've looked at it and, and it becomes fairly obvious to us that the county wants to go back into the old building and that's probably going to become a reality. And from our standpoint, all we're worried about at this point is maintaining the administrative hierarchy that we have and that, and that we maintain the, the health board structure there so that we have input from the, the different, you know, we, we have a uh, an MD, we have a dentist, we have a, uh, a nurse, and we have some, a veterinarian, myself, and then we also have uh, some at-large people on this who have interest in the health care of the community. And so that's what we need to maintain is the, the people looking at the day-to-day -day operation and the programs that we offer and what we need to expand into. And, you know, we can spend our time worrying about the health care that we provide to this community and, and the, the, uh, the safety of our uh, 
you know, our septic systems and our wells and all the environmental issues that come up. And I'm just afraid that if we lose that and the, the health uh, board becomes the county commission who are elected officials, they don't have a background in health and, and their, their interest is more in the, the money part of it. So I, from us, our standpoint, I think we would just ask that we try to maintain the, the structure that we have so that we, uh, so that we can provide the best service to this community that, that we truly need in, in this community. So uh, don't worry about the building. You know, we'll do with what we've got to do. We've done for 40 years now. So uh, we would just ask that you, you try to maintain the structure that we have, and, and we really appreciate all your help. So thank you very much. Glenn, thank you for thank pointing you. out septic systems and uh, water <coughs> issues, because I think a lot of people at home and in the community don't realize how much the health department does besides vaccinations and the breastfeeding classes. That's a perfect example right there is the water issue you talked about in septic tanks. Yeah, that, I mean, working with EPA, that, that kind that. of and, stuff. And I, I don't know that the county would discontinue that, but you know, as things come up, we've we've talked about uh, uh, inspecting swimming pools. You know, we haven't done it, and then these issues came up. But um, in our meetings, you know, we talk about what things we need to be doing or what things that uh, what issues will be coming. If there's a zoonotic uh, disease comes up. Right. Uh, zoonotic means that it's transmissible from animals to humans. Uh, you need somebody there that at least knows what that is right. and, and what, what issues those are. And if we lose that structure and use the county commission as the, the health board, that just all disappears. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> My name is John Ruddy Bush, 1849 West North Street. Um, I come to this podium this afternoon or this evening here to explain to you folks that I've kind of sat in on most of the county commission meetings ever since March. Uh, and prior to that, when we had the two commissioners um, prior to that that was voted out, and uh, obviously they was pretty arrogant. They, you know, they could have probably done something within three months after the problem with the the building but they just left it continue on uh, what I can see of the county commission uh, they want to get them back into a building that's operable before the end of the year it is my understanding you may correct me or, or not and I'd like to have you correct me if I'm wrong but if they don't do something immediately to that building the city plans to have it tore down uh, Although the building is old, uh, the contractor has made, a, a, you know, has really come out and said that he can secure that roof and bring life into that building for quite a few years. And the, the point is they can get that open back up before the end of the year and get, or they're close, and get the health department back into a familiar surroundings it's probably not the best it's just like everybody else but okay here's the point the city could go ahead and go along with the county stay with their fundings work with them and if you think you can save them if they think they can save two million on insurance within so many years set that two million off side for a down payment of another building you know, not go at it this way because you folks are the ones decide you're going to separate because they don't want to build a new building. We don't have time for a new building. We've got to get them back into an operation to get settled up. And another thing is I think the city and the county needs to get together because um, we don't know yet what's going to happen with the health board. It could need to be expanded. You know, by the city and the county working together, you could probably per purchase and I'm not pointing that out but it is the the structure of that building my understanding is as good as the courthouse and that's the bank building you could temporarily get them back in this building and then be working on the bank building and get a more suitable situation or maybe you know configurate and that's what I keep telling the county they need to configurate our our present situation and you know I think the city needs to look at that situation also 
but I don't think that was a, it's a right move for you folks to just throw out your hands and say, well, if we're not going to put them in a new building, then we don't want to be involved into it. Because the health department is works 90% in the city anyways. It take, they take care of most of the people in the city. However, the county does, uh, and the health department does work with other counties for water testing and so on and so forth. And like I said, I think, and then furthermore, the biggest problem was is when the construction was done on them buildings, that should have been inspected with the right inspector. And if you've got inspectors that don't know what they're doing, they shouldn't have been on the job, and they should be, be held responsible to fix that building. And another thing is, is you have architects building that building that's coming up there checking their, should check their, their work, and should check the work of the contractors, and they should have made sure it was done right. You know, this, this was not just a, a, a happening that happened just a few months ago. This is a continuous problem that ended up to where we're at now because of so, a lot of people making mistakes before it got there. And I just feel that, you know, um, you know, and furthermore, the contract, my understanding is the contract was that the, count, the, the county kept it and the city was supposed to pay for all the expense and repairs on that building. So really, you're trying to get out of a contract of $500,000 where you should have probably paid for the whole works. But the county's willing to back up on this situation. But the only thing is, is I'm not happy with, I've read the thing over and you guys want to clear a waiver and then do another procedure, um, which, and then also get out of it entirely. You know, I, I, I don't think you're, you're using common sense here. I think that our city commissioners, although I don't have any property at this time in the city, but I think you folks ought to think about this and think about it seriously because, you know, the health department does <coughs> cover the people in the city a lot more than they do in the county. And if, you know, you're, you're, you're picking over some small things that I don't think it's, it's necessary. Thank you. I, I would address a few things that you said. I disagree with your, your version of the contract. That, that's, I think anybody who's ever been in the real estate business will tell you that, that that's not what that contract reads like. Ma routine maintenance on a structure is not replacing a roof. Uh, maybe, maybe a roofing membrane. I doubt it would even cover that. It sure as heck isn't going to count a roofing structure that wasn't even properly investigated property pro prior to the county's purchase. But that's crying over spilled milk. One thing you need to keep in mind, and I, and I appreciate your comments. I, I've watched you speak of the county, and I think you're being very thoughtful, and you're looking at all angles of it. But I think some of your information may be, m m may be incorrect. The other thing to keep in mind, along with this, I, under, I appreciate that you're, you think they ought to be moved back in that building right away. And that's fine. We've had issues in the past that have kept us from doing that. You mentioned some of them. But one thing to keep in mind, we, people keep saying we're going to replace the roof. This million dollars that they're going to spend, and people need to be clear on this, that isn't one bit of remodeled bit inside. That's the same old building. That's not one new light switch. That's not, that is simply reinforcing a roof. And here's the other part. It's not even a new roof. It's the same old roofing membrane that's on there. It's not even a new roof. It's just a restructure. Is that the best use of taxpayers' money? I don't think so. And one thing the city's got to be thinking about, and I might steal a little of John's thunder here, I don't think we want that liability of them moving back into that building. I think a million dollars in fixing that structure, what's next? I don't, I don't think we want to take that on as a city. So I appreciate that, you, you, that some of your thoughts that you want to get them moved in, but I think you probably should get some of the, some of the details a little more clear. And like I said, I don't think that contract reads that way. That's not what I see. Maintenance on the structure is different than structural maintenance. They like to flip those words around and say structural maintenance. It's maintenance on the structure. Maintenance. Would you consider an entire roof replacement maintenance? How many, how many of these businesses around town have ever signed a lease like that? Anywhere. So why would you think the city's agreement even reads like that? I think when you ask most people what maintenance on a structure means, it doesn't mean replacing the entire roof. I think our office, offer is generous. I think our offer is throwing our hands in the air saying, good gosh, what else are we going to do? What can we do? We don't want them to spend $500,000 on that roof, but by God, they're not moving anywhere. All they're doing is saying no to everything. I think you saw in the newspaper the kind of running that we've had with them on Grand Street. You'll see how they operate. 
At what point do we just stand up and just throw our hands in the air and say, here's our offer, we just want to walk away? I don't even feel like we own the 500000 to be honest. And I'll tell you, two other commissioners don't think we own 500000 and that would be Jim Guile and John Price. Because both of them in a public meeting said they don't think we should spend that money on it. They also both said while they were getting elected, we shouldn't fix that building. Well, now where are they at? They don't have any more information. It looks more grim than positive. Yet here they are, going against the, the, the things that they even campaigned on. We're going to get this solved. We're going to get this fixed. We shouldn't spend money on that building. I don't think the city's responsible. And here they are, jumping back and saying something totally different. As to the other building and, and saying that the city only wants new, one of our offers said, hey, let's go out and look at a bunch of other buildings. Let's see what else is out there. We think we've looked everything over, but let's, let's take a look. Let's see everything that's possibly out there and, and try and come up with a good solution. But not just new. We think new is the best solution. We like the location. We think, it's, we think it would work, work best for the health department. But let's see what's out there. They didn't want to do that either. They're a whole contention. And watch, watch how this happens. <coughs> They're going to blow the money on that building. They're going to eventually try and move the prosecutor's offices over there. They're going to move the health department again. They're just throwing money away. I have, I have, you've, you've mentioned a little bit. I mean, you've even said you think the building's a bad idea. I think in all the meetings I've sat here and watched, I've heard one person say, repair that building. Maybe two. Maybe two. There might have been two. I don't even know if there's two, but I've heard one. Well, and I watched the online survey. And I mean, not that that's scientific, but I'll say KSL link surveys are usually pretty conservative when it comes to government spending money. And 78% said either fix it or buy a new building. Who are these guys listening to? Who are the three of these guys listening to? They're sure as hell not listening to the constituents. Because they're hadn't, like I said, even you haven't said that's a good investment. Like I said, I appreciate your thoughts on moving it in. And I've listened to most of the times you've spoken. You usually are very well thought. But who's asking for this building to stay the same? Can I rebut? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. OK. Well, like I said, here's the, here's the deal, though, is can you tell me a building right now that you can have them set up in if you bought a building right now and have the health department set up in there by the end of the year? We can't. But okay. we've been dragging right. our feet on this whole process for a year and a half now. We've been wanting to do something different from day one. We've had, here's the sad thing. It boils down, and this, 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 will, this will, I'll still Randall's thunder on this, this more than ever proves why we don't need city and county government, why we need one government. And if we're going to have a county government, they need to change some rules and put more than three people on there. Because it boils down to two people being able to waste millions of taxpayers' dollars reinvesting in a building that's worth about $250,000, putting a million dollars in there. Two people. No matter how much this board turns blue in the face and how much that third commissioner over there might turn blue in the face, it boils down to two people have all the say. And when those two people don't listen to a single word from anybody out there or anybody up here or anybody out there doing those online surveys or whatever else, what more can you do? I mean, we're at the, we're at the mercy of them. We're being held up by two people who are trying to make political gain here and not do what's right for the community. I still disagree with you because it's like this, you know, the city was in partially involved when they, they bought that building, was planning on put, moving the county uh, health department in that building. At that time, that building was a smooth board building. And the problem was, is when they started doing it, the city inspector should have stopped and said, hey, we can't put the American issues on that roof, that's too heavy. Another thing is, is, is that when the contractor works on that, He's going to sign an agreement that he can fix that and bring that building back and bring it back to the uh, safe condition. If he can't fix that building and bring it back <laughs> to a safe condition, then he don't get paid. Sure, let's nip this in the bud. Right. Let's so wait, no, hold on. Let, no, let's no, no, get, no, no, let's no. go with this. So let me just get this straight. What, what do you think the best answer is? You think the county ought to sue the city? You think we all? Let me just tell you. I think who's, 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 I'm just saying it's the tax it's the taxpayers. Agreed to the it's the taxpayers. But you're wanting to waive all the other costs. It doesn't matter fine. the cost because it's not my money. It's this, it's their money. This is it's the taxpayers. A, There's debate, another clause in there I don't think is right. This isn't a and debate, though. This is an open. No, it is a debate. No, it is not, not just people among him, but it's our public forum to explain our position. And so our it, position is this: we have sat around and been nice about the county commission. For far too long, we've tried to play nice. We've tried to say nice things about them. Oh, they're good guys. But all they've done is stonewalled. And they talk about lawsuits. You've read those letters time and time again. Who's suing who? All they're going to do, it's all the citizens. They're going to sue us? Why don't they just do the right thing and okay, knock that building again, down and put something new up? Again, not a debate. Chairman, Mrs. Chairman, yes, sir. 
That's what I've been trying to do. Yes, that is what I'm trying to do. Thank you for your comments. I said this isn't a bait. This is a public. There is one other comments. comment that um, I would like to respond to, though, and that well, you, I don't know that you have to be up there, but uh, you said at one point that the city was going to tear the building down. I don't think that was ever the intent of the well, city. Well, I, I understand that if there's nothing, if something ain't done with it pretty soon, that the it, it right now is a condemned building and that if it's not repaired and fixed within a period of time, it'll have to be destroyed anyways. That's never been a part of a discussion. I've heard rumors of that. And well, like I said, Commissioner rumor I can, doesn't constitute right, a discussion. I can you know, clarify the I, process if you'd like on that. It, technically, that could be an end result, but uh, as, you, as everyone is aware, the building issue has been out there for some time, and the city's worked with the county on extending deadline after providing extension after extension after an extension for a deadline, probably beyond what we would in other situations, and, you know, one could argue at, at least. And, and you can see from that that while we do have the discretion to require the building to be torn down if it's not repaired, our intention is to work and try to get it repaired, recognizing that we also have a role to work with the county in doing so, repaired or w some other option, whatever that in ends up being. And so that's why we've, we've been uh, trying to work with that timeline. But, but technically speaking, we do have the discretion to require any building that's considered a dangerous structure to be torn down if it's not uh, repaired to a, what would be considered a, a condition that takes it away from being a dangerous structure um, within a reasonable time frame. So technically yeah. correct, but practically we've really worked to extend that timeline and work with them. We've, so see, we've done everything we can to well, try, and, and I, I think there's there's fault on both the county mm -hmm. commission side and our side. So, you know, it, what we need to do now, rather than the way I, what I think is that we should just move forward and get an agreement with the county, which I think is still possible, and that we both are involved in running the health department. Ooh. I right. agree. And I, I believe that, you know, uh, that's the only thing is you guys say you're, say you're going to stay into it, which is probably a good deal because, like I said, the county, the city has 90% of the deal on building a building later on is a good idea. You guys have never thought about that, never even talked about that, or buying another building mm -hmm. for later on for improvements. But... You know, right now, the, the, the way it was on the table before you guys had the meeting here is that you guys was going to just split, let the county take care of it, let the county take care of the insurance, let the county take care of the other. And, you know, uh, like I said, I don't think that's quite right. And like I said, right now, the main thing is is get the building fixed so it won't be tore down. It's a useful building, yet it would be a useful building for temporary for the county health department and then you can start saving and planning for a new development for them. I think and that's sure, very well spoken. I'm <laughs> sure the county would want to work with you on that. I've heard John speak that. <clears throat> I've heard John on the phone the other day and they've said, oh no, we'll do that. No, we still want the city involved into it. We still want to keep it that way. But <clears throat> the problem is, is like I said, you know, they can't control the city and you can't control the county, but it does as a working situation you make things work together and like I said y'all the, the, then the health department can still stay on your insurance that would be a savings and you could use the money from there there's some people probably disagree with me about doing it but I, I really feel though the city 90 percent of the health department is done within the city so therefore the city should still have the involvement thank you hey thank you for your comments I'm Stephanie Wolf. I'm the Maternal and Child Health Program Coordinator at the Health Department. Um, I'd like to make comments that bring it back away from the building issue and back to the joint governance issue, which is why we had requested this meeting tonight. Um, the commissioners on both commissions, um, this re the relationship issues, the things that are going on with that, um, all of you will be affected by this at most for the duration of your term. Um, it affects the lives of 50 of our staff. Mm -hmm. We've devoted 10, 15, 20, 30 plus years to these programs because we believe in them. 
And yes, I can get a job somewhere else if my programming gets cut. I will. But I believe in my programming, and I believe what it does for the community, as well as every other program in our department. I have files of testimonials from citizens of all education and income levels speaking to how the programs have benefited their family, what they've received from it. And that's what's at stake here. We know because we've seen it with other health departments, Shawnee County, Geary County, Riley County, that have gone from city county entities to county only. And what's happened is that their programs have been cut over the course of time. They can't sustain it. They can no longer play the role in the community that they used to. And inevitably, that's what's going to happen. And I just beg you to consider that above all things, that that's truly what's at stake here. And please keep those things in mind as you proceed with making decisions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Lene Meyer from uh, at 2242 Huntington Road, and I want to say, first of all, thank you, Kay, for your comment and that, that you would be supportive of the joint venture. The other thing, um, I just want to say briefly, uh, having worked in, with people in my profession all, all my life, I liked uh, Dr. Adams' analogy of uh, the divorce and the kids. Um, I really hope you would consider, because personalities are so strong on both sides from what I gather, um, a as a way of really getting to the heart of the matter and, and getting beyond personalities, beyond egos, beyond anger, beyond all of that, that you might consider a mediator uh, as, when you get into the thick and thin of, of that decision. Um, I really, really think you move quicker and in a healthier way, and it could be more of a win-win, uh, keeping in mind that words hurt, and when words hurt, people dig in deeper and get more obstinate um, either on either side, and then that gets you nowhere. So uh, I would consider if, if personalities continue to be strong and, and get in the way, then a mediator might be a, a good fix. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I would disagree that we've dug our heels in. I, I, and, and I mean, I'm cranky up here because I've been here for a year and a half going through it. But what I'm cranky about, I, I started this thing very happy and positive. So this is an opportunity to do something. What I'm cranky about is a year and a half later, I'm still up here sitting here hearing the same old arguments from the other side. Now, unless they're willing to come back and give you guys an interlocal agreement that lets you be more autonomous, which we've all, don't, I wouldn't just point out Kay, I think it's disrespectful to the four of us, whoever said that, I don't mean, I don't mean necessarily in a mean way, but all five of us, that's all we want for you is to have a little more autonomy. I mean, I think our approach even said, don't even have county and city commissioners on your board. What the hell are we even doing on the board? I mean, we don't need to be there. Okay, and just get it, get do, we, it. do we have any other comments from the... Well, I'm director? still responding to their, know, their comments. Know, but you, you keep repeating. Are, are we on a schedule? You keep, you keep repeating yourself. Well, no, I'm sorry, but I was elected to represent people in these reviews of other people. Correct. Are you just trying to cut correct. me off from my no, speaking? I'm not trying to cut you then off. Let then let me speak. Then let me speak. No, you're, no. I, you, so you are cutting me off? Yes, I am cutting okay. you off right now. So okay. I'll move on to the next person. You know, I'm going to pull Rule 9. I'm going to pull Rule 9 in you, and I'm going to ask that this commission overrule your decision and allow me to speak freely. This has been going on for a year and a half. Aaron, I think you need to just calm down a little bit. What's your name and, and your address, Ray please? Ruska, you want to run 235 meeting? North Santa Fe. You're acting pretty childish. So Ray, I'm acting like somebody who's fed up of being here, no, listening to the childish. same baloney. You want to baloney. play this game? Go home and play this game. Or I'm going to tell your mother. So. Anybody else? Tracy Sin, uh, 340 South Connecticut. Um, keep this in mind is that little children that we're concerning about and the people that are on welfare and doesn't want to be on welfare but had no choice because they were born poor, right? So instead of fighting or, you know, 
this and that. Think about maybe a single mom with five children or five kids doesn't have uh, money to get on the bus, doesn't have enough people to babysit their children, so they have to have all their kids get on the bus to go all the way to the north side of town. And, and the weather is going to be, might be 120, 130 degree high with the heat. So would you please reconsider just instead of between the county and the city, I think that Mr. Bingston, Attorney Mr. Bingston and um, Montoya should have like, and the city manager should have a private meeting between the three of them and make a decision, not for the people or for you, but um, because they're lawyers, they know more about the laws and um, you know all about the Salinas and things. But reconsider why you should be joining with the county. Think about the small children or child that are left behind, that are suffering suffering the most because they were born into a poor family that could not afford or cannot afford to go see a doctor all the way down to the north side of town. Um, if we have it here, that would be a wonderful place. I totally agree with Aaron. You're right about the, 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 re, the reconstruction uh, structural. It's not good. But before you think, before you start, you know, um, just overanalyzing everything and getting your feelings hurt and everything else, I, I understand it's hard being in the public view and people awfully um, kind of ostracize you at times. But please think about the small kids and the small children and the poor people that needed your help the most. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, if I may interrupt uh, just briefly. I know there have been some procedural questions raised. Uh, I do think addressing those is a matter of uh, potentially privileged communication uh, with me, if that would ever at any point be useful. That's always available to you. Okay. Madam Mayor, I have a comment at this point. That's all right. Sure. Um, I've only been on the job three and a half months. Um, and, uh, you know, I have a congenial relationship with all three of the county commissioners. I, I don't have a problem talking to any of them, and they don't have a problem talking to me. And uh, it just boggles my mind that, you know, Salinas part of Saline County. It's not like a different country or anything. And I can't understand why we don't get along, you know? What's the big deal? Um, it's just that when, maybe when we're in our little group over here and they're in the little group over there, things don't happen the same way. But um, I, I find it puzzling that um, I can talk to any of the county commissioners and we're fine. We, you know, go have a cup of coffee, talk about the weather, whatever. Um, but it, somehow it doesn't you know, transfer over to this arena somehow. Well, I think we're constantly told things and then the story changes. And that was my point earlier is my frustration is we have not dug our heels in. We've come up with option after option after option after option. And we received nothing but negative back. As I said earlier, the Grand Avenue bridge and roadway are a clear example of the county standing up there saying, oh, we're happy to work with the people, everything. But when you actually look at the correspondence, they're doing everything but. And that's exactly what we're running into here. This is not an easy process. We can't stand up here and say, hey, we're just going to go in with the county and get back together and do things the way they were. That just isn't going to happen. Those days are behind you, whether you like it or not. We like a new arrangement. We like one that's more strong for you, that helps you out, that helps you be more autonomous without us. We can't get there just by jumping. We've got other arrangements. We've got to deal with this building. Everybody says, don't, don't deal with the building. We've got to take care of that first. Then we've got to figure out what this new arrangement is going to look like if we're going to get something. And it's a step-by-step -step process. I don't think anybody stood up here and said, we don't, we don't want to work with you, even when we made the decision to separate. We said it's a means to an end. We hope that we can get back together and work something out. 
but we had to do step one first because the other agreement allowed that very problem that led us here, and that is that basically two people can end up controlling the whole situation. So we've got to try and find something that's better, and it, whatever it takes to get there, we're willing to do. We don't stand up here and promise one thing and talk nice to you and then go back in there and make a different decision. We stand out here and we tell you exactly what we want to do and what our plans are with the, that we can discuss and try and do what's right. But it's a step-by-step -step process. We can't just stand up here and go, okay, well, we'll just forget the rest. We wish we could. Trust me. I wish to say, I mean, we, I get along with the commissioners just like Randall said he does. I wish we could just sit down and go get a coffee and say, let's get this thing figured out and work it out. It just doesn't work like that. It's unfortunate. But, but the, like I said, we've been flexible. We've tried different options. We've thrown out different ideas. Heck, we said, we'll, we'll pay for it. We'll, we'll front the money. We'll put the money up there. All you got to do is just commit that 500000 that you taxed us for a couple years ago. That's all we're asking. You know, we'll cover it. Nothing. Now on our table item, Mr. Bingston, should we go back to that or would we go over to our yeah. next executive session after everyone's done speaking? I'm sorry, Mary. And I will get right to you, ma'am. I'm sorry, Mayor, I didn't understand. On our tabled item, would uh -huh. we go to that next, or are we going to go ahead and move our legal uh, executive session above that after the citizens are done speaking? Uh, yes, when this item is finished, I would appreciate the opportunity to speak to you again. Okay. When that item, assuming that item is brought off the table, I would like to begin with an executive session okay. with you all. Yes. Okay, just making sure I had that clear. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Mona Hargrave, 704 South 10th Street. Um, I'm one of the employees at the health department. I'm also one of the children involved in this divorce. And I just want to say, first of all, that um, I want to thank all of you for what you have been trying to do for us, because I'm not a very political person. I've always kind of had my head in the sand when it comes to politics, because I find them confusing and I haven't wanted to bother to learn about them. Well, this has been a very eye-opening experience. Um, I just want to say, though, that, you know, just like in a, you know, marital situation when there's a divorce, you know, the people that get hurt the worst are the kids. And, you know, listening to you talk about how you're just tired of this and, and seeing your anger, um, I think that all of these people that work at the health department have felt so angry so many times throughout this last year and a half and have laid awake at night worrying about what's going to happen to our security, you know, our jobs, our, these people, I, I worked with these people from 1990 to 2000 and then I went away for 12 years and then like a bad penny I came back. And it just is so amazing to me that when I came back after being gone for 12 years, so many of these people were still there. And there's people that are sitting here that work with their best friends. They would do anything for their friends at work. We are like a family. And this is tearing us apart. I don't have nearly as, as much at stake as most of these people. You know, my husband works for the city. I have that city insurance, you know. If, you know, all this comes down the way it's looked like it's going to, it's not going to affect me as much as some of these people, unless they decide that they don't need a breastfeeding peer counselor anymore, and then it will. Um, but it hurts me, you know, to see this happening to my work family. And it's not fair because we didn't do anything wrong. You know, the damn roof went bad. That wasn't our fault. And so many of these people have worked for so many years to serve the community. It's just so unfair. And I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm begging you, our city parents, to please do whatever you have to to reconcile with our county parents and get us back to a place where we can function yeah, we would have liked to have had more room, but at this point in time, I have heard conversations at work saying, okay, if we end up in the old place, how can we make this work? If we put so-and-so over here in that office, then we could have these two share this office, and we could put this there and that. 
we're already thinking how we can make it work in the old building. We'll do whatever. But I got to tell you, I, I said I'm not very smart about politics, but when they told us that you guys were doing this thing that Jason came up, well, and maybe I'm wrong about that. I, my understanding that was Jason Gage was the spearhead. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't quote me on that. But come up with this plan where you guys were going to present this, this idea to the county, and part of it was you guys backing out. And at the time, I thought, well, these people are smarter than me. That sounds like stepping off a cliff to me, but maybe I'm wrong. But now it feels like you did step off the cliff and left us. And, I, and I'm not saying that in anger or anything. I'm just trying to understand what has happened to where, yeah, these two or three guys have so much control over what's going to happen to us in this community. And I'm sorry because I know this isn't a place for emotions, but I'm so sick of listening to numbers and just back and forth that never goes anywhere. And I guess, again, I'm just saying, please, guys, do what you can to help us. I know you've been trying. Please don't give up. Please, you know, if the parents are getting a divorce, what do they have to do? They have to take a hard look at what's best for their kids. And if that means going to marriage counseling, then maybe this mediator idea is not a bad idea. So just please consider doing whatever you can for us. Because I think we deserve it and, and the community that we serve deserves it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mona, I think we are going to get it together. I hope so. Hi. I'm Lauren Banniger, 2078 Leland Way. I guess I've got a question. Being a retired teacher and being around kids and divorced parents and everything, <laughs> when it came time, I don't understand why we're not all at the conference. That's what I guess I don't get. Is there some rule against that? Why aren't you guys sitting over here and they're sitting over there and we're out here and if we're going to have a debate at that time, bring it together instead of saying he said, she said, we said. You know, if we had a child that was in that situation at school, you call in both parents. It doesn't matter if they're not living together, but how do you solve it without both sides being at the same table? Mm -hmm. I, I guess I don't understand. Is there a rule against that? We, we tried it, but we got, we got what, chunk in the trunk, and uh, I can't remember what other comments that we received when we it tried a to circus. have a, a joint meeting. I mean, it's, we, we tried. We, we I think we try had, again. Well, yeah. I, I mean, I'm happy to try again, provided it. Well, I, I just think that would be wise, and I also felt like, particularly, we've come to these meetings, and there have been so many decisions that were already made, and, and it's like the constituency, the people, they just don't know. And yes, I have a vested interest. My wife works at the health department. I also have a vested interest in Salina. I've grown up here. I know all of you guys. I know all the county commissioners. You know, this is my town, and I want things to happen. But I just don't get it. So I guess I had a question of why it couldn't come together. And thank you for your work, and thank you for listening, and thank you for all the things involved here. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Lauren. Uh, Lauren, I think everybody has a vested interest. I, I appreciate, uh, I mean, I, I think the, the entire community does. I mean, it's not just because your wife works there. We all do. And I appreciate your secondary comments saying just as a citizen's line. We all have a vested interest in this, and that's why it's difficult, and that's why we're angry. That's why we're pushing, because we want it to be done right. You know, we could just be passive and say, ah, it's fine, go back in there, we'll raise taxes, do whatever we got to do, and walk away from it. We want, I wanted something better. I didn't want you guys back in that building. I wanted a better agreement. You know, I wanted a better service for our community. You know, I understood what those numbers meant when we have a preemie baby and how much that ends up costing our community. You know, I knew those things. I watched the, some of the people who I think are maybe in the audience tonight speak about how much the health department helped them. I mean, that's what makes me mad. What makes me mad is people getting up here talking about the contracts and all that and the numbers. It's all part of it. But I'm mad because I want what's best. And any thought differently of that is wrong. I don't know how to get there. I'm trying. Is there anybody else out there that would like to come up and <clears throat> Bill 
Cumberland, 612 Post Oak Lane here in town. And my wife works at the health department, so I've got a personal involvement in myself. And a lot of these ladies are my friends, real good friends. And uh, I think both sides need to keep in mind that this is not just a building. We're talking about people and their lives. For me alone, um, with the increase in the health, insur the health insurance, I don't know what I'll do. I mean, that'll, that'll be devastating to my family alone. So I know you said you've tried, but stepping out of the arena, I don't feel like us trying. I think we need to oh, put no. our heads into the game. We're still at it. That's good to hear. Because <laughs> yeah. what I'm hearing right now with, you know, with your argument that you have made, it sounds like to me you gave up. You said you were out of it. And as far as looking after my taxpayer, I, I tune in to you guys, and I like listening to you because mm -hmm. I think you do look after my money. I try. And I have a lot of respect for you. But I don't think we put you up there. I think we need to keep our heads cool, mm -hmm. keep ourselves calm, and let's do what's right for the people. Mm -hmm. Not for our egos, not for personal gain, whatever this, whatever it is. We're here for them, for one, and then for our city. So let's just keep that in mind. Right. Yeah. And that's the most important and thing. What he said, the individual, I think that would be a great idea to bring both sides in here and let's do this right. Let them hear what they have to say as well. And I think I think that'd be great. Mm -hmm. You know. But just remember that it affects lives, not just a building. Right, that's right. Right. That's right. Thank you. Yeah, and I know a lot of you have come and spoke to him before. Again, it's just, you know. I feel like you stand up and I suppose I, I, I if I give the impression that I'm giving up I mean I, I that probably is to a degree 90 percent true I mean part of me feels like I've tried it myself everything and and I do feel like at some point you just got to say uh, and I, I think I was referring more to the, the the building part of it to say let's do, let's get rid of that let's 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 be done with that let's walk on and if we can come to something else then let's go there um, but you know, I think we're all still in the in this thing, ho hoping to make something out of. I think Commissioner Crawford makes no secret. I mean, if her her hopes are, and I think ours are too. I'm probably just a little more guarded with what I think the outcome will be, but I hope. And that's why we're all here tonight. Yeah. Now, is there anybody else that would like to come up? Uh, Jason, I know we are going to go to, into another Could, executive session. Excuse me. Can we have an opportunity to discuss this? I held back my comments because I wanted to wait and hear what everybody had to say. Mm -hmm. So can we have a few moments for of a discussion? Course. Okay. Well, I think all along I appreciate all of you coming out. And I know that you've been to a lot of meetings, uh, a lot of them at 11 o'clock on Tuesday mornings, a lot of them Monday afternoons at 4. And I appreciate you guys coming out here. And I think uh, a big part of who's not here tonight and who quite frankly can't be here tonight are the people that use the health department. And I, I would hate that they get left out of this equation. And I know a lot of the decisions that we are tasked with making up here uh, have a lot of different components put toward them. But uh, I can tell you from my own personal standpoint that uh, number one for me, are the people that are using that health department and that need it. And I know that you that most of you that work at the health department and that have come up and spoke tonight, I know that that's your uh, main objective too. Uh, but for me, the second group is, is those employees that have uh, got up and, and spoke because I know that you uh, are dedicated. I know that you bring a lot of uh, experience professional experience that we're, we, we can't replace. We, we got to get this right the first time. And, uh, and I just want to maybe, I, I know I can't put your minds at ease, but just to tell you that, that there's been a lot of thought that I know my fellow commissioners have, have put into this. And I know a lot of us are frustrated and some of us wear our hearts on our sleeve a little bit more than others, but that's okay. Uh, me personally, I can tell you what my thought process through this whole thing has been. And just very briefly, that is, as Commissioner Hardy and myself, we came into this about three and a half months ago. We received a packet of the information that the health department provides, the services, and, 
and all the things they do. We received a copy of the Pikel engineering study on the condition of the building. We received a copy of the joint resolution, which states out the contract between the health department, the county, and the city. And the fourth thing that we received was the uh, KSU uh, building needs analysis. Uh, we came into this study and uh, with, with the idea of looking at those four pieces of, of material. And just for Yvonne, I just want you to know that, uh, that uh, you're asking for the space required to do the best job that you and your staff can do is exactly what you should have asked for. And, and I think that you maybe should have asked for it several years ago when, when, the, when it really needed to be done. And I know why you didn't ask because you know the money wasn't there. So, but uh, I hope that you don't feel responsible for any of the path that this, that this went down, uh, the path we went down on this. But uh, what I did, and I can tell you, is I wanted to take a look at all that material as a whole and say what is the best decision we can make for the city, for the taxpayers, for the users, for the employees, and so on. That's the information that I, that I took and went, and went with. Uh, part of that uh, process involved all of us. And quite frankly, we the commissioners gave Jason and city staff the direction on uh, what we wanted to do and where we felt the best way forward was. So all the decisions that have made, been made thus far have been ours up here. Um, but as far as dissolving the joint resolution with the, with the county, the whole reason behind that was that we had an agreement that within part of that agreement was saying we're responsible for the maintenance of that building, structural maintenance, whatever the wording was. And we had a deadline that we, quite frankly, were up against. And we were negotiating with them on the way to move forward with the building, whether it's look at another building, remodel that one, or move forward. Well, our opinion was that that building, uh, wasn't a good building, and if, and if we stayed in the agreement, then we were going to be responsible for the structural maintenance on that building from the time it was repaired moving forward. That's not the whole reason why we did that, but that's, that was a part of it. Um, from that point forward, it's been two separate issues. It's been the building and the health department. And I think that we've been pretty solid up here together uh, saying that our number one goal is to keep the health department together. And I know that time is running out. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've got till the end of the year to make that, or roughly there in that time frame. Uh, kind of, sort of. Okay. It, 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 all, it all depends on what tax rates are certified on August 25th. Really. Right. And, 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 I, and I'm pleased that you brought that up because we've included in our budget uh, funding the health department. Um, I think that, at least from my standpoint, we've seen the county cut back on their budget. We suspect that they'll probably do it for years going forward, whether they're in it by themselves or we're in it also. I hope that we're in it together with them. But, and I s suspect that it'll be our responsibility and other city commission's responsibilities to make up the difference every time they drop their mill levy, we'll probably have to raise ours, which basically means that some other services in the city are going to have to be cut. Uh, but if that's the way the county in the future chooses to balance their budget and cut their costs, then, then I guess that's the game we'll have to play uh, moving forward. But uh, I just want to assure you that I think, uh, I think that all of us have a unified health department um, in the front of our minds. I know that a big part that I'd like to see happen is an interlocal agreement. This joint resolution is the only one that we have left. Hmm. And everybody says it works great, and it did until there's an issue where it came up to where two people could make the decision based on everybody to end it. I would love to see the health department to be an entity that neither one of these commissions could call an end to. And then, then, it, would, then it would totally be non-political. Um, so I just want to reemphasize, I, I, I care most about the people that need to use this health department and all the services that, a, that is uniquely a city 
Health Department. We're not a little tiny county out in western Kansas. We're a city of 47,000 people and a county of 55,000 people. We are uniquely a city health department. So uh, I'd like to make sure that we're able to fund that appropriately. Good. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I don't have any. I thought we closed the public uh, forum. He raised his hand. I told him he could come up. Um, I was, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was uh, wondering if uh, the commission, since they moved around the uh, agenda items, you know, 3.1, Johnson control issue, uh, is that going to be heard before you go into executive session? I think. Greg made, made that comment that it was going to be. Um, Our agenda has been amended and Johnson control issue is actually moved to next Monday. We had an amended agenda, so that one is no longer on this agenda. This is uh, mostly just the health department discussion so today. When, when uh, Mr. Bankston tabled it, he moved it to another time. No, no the three, I think he <laughs> might not have the updated uh, agenda, yeah, the, the 3.1 is the health department settlement agreement and release with Saline County. So I don't think you got the updated version on the amended agenda. Well, it's kind of like, yeah, so I get So that's these not things. what was tabled. Yeah, but I, I get these uh, notices by email, and by the time I get the notice by email, then I come over here, then the agenda's changed to a different time. That's confusing for the public. Right. It's confusing mm -hmm. for me. And, um, <laughs> I think we have copies of the agenda at the door, don't we? Well, yeah. But yeah, but you only find out when you get here. Yeah, yeah, just for clarification, commissioners, uh, probably not a lot of reason to spend a lot of time on this question, but for clarification, as you know, what we typically do for regular meetings is try to have all the agenda items ready on a Thursday to go into your packet to go out to the public that evening so that both you and the public have an opportunity to review those uh, with a Monday meeting. This is a special meeting that was needed that we hadn't planned to have. We had some items that came up that were very timely in nature. That uh, Johnson Controls item was an item that was timely in nature. Uh, we felt that we were probably ready to bring that onto this uh, agenda. That's why it was placed on there. And then response back from Johnson Controls was that they had some things that they wanted to discuss further. So we felt it would pr basically waste your time to leave that on the agenda until we get uh, finished speaking with them. So it would make sense at that point to issue an amended agenda, bring that item uh, for next week's meeting. And that's why you have the uh, two health department items uh, remaining today. And I probably should have clarified that at the beginning of the meeting that the agenda had been amended in case somebody didn't. Well, I came grab to this meeting one. specifically to address that problem or right. issue. And I've been here for a little over uh, an hour and 40 minutes. And the agenda is at the door. Well, I understand the agenda is at the door, mm -hmm. but I received an agenda that had the 3.1 on it. I think my email was sent out earlier. Do you, when, did, when did the bulk email sent out? The fact that Mr. Haruska didn't check his email prior to coming again is, I, I think the fact the meeting started on, on time. I know my mom, who you were going to call, did call down to check and see what time the county commission started. It was posted at 8.30, but she was informed very technically that the meeting started at 8.05. So our meeting did start at 6.30. The agenda is posted out there. The email, I assume, is a courteous that, cur courtesy that we do to constituents. Um, it is there. Maybe I should call your daddy instead of your mother. Well, he's dead, so if you can reach him, well, go ahead maybe and get a Ouija board or something and reach him and <laughs> let me know. But I'm sure he would think that the comments that you're making are frivolous and not actually well, applicable to the, the they're, they're not applicable to this discussion. We're not having minutes. public discussion. We're having discussions on this issue. So Mr. Ruska, thanks for your comments. Well, wait a minute. I thought the, the chairman was in charge of this meeting. Correct. I didn't she, say she, that correct. she you were in charge. And, and All of a sudden you started commenting back to me. I was addressing her. Mm -hmm. Well, so why don't you try something? Is, the, to is the public doing, comment open? Why don't you just try something? Is the public comment open? The public comment was open, and I did address the Johnson Control and the public comment. So I did address Aaron, that. Aaron, so why don't you just try to keep your comments? Not too late, because I'm not going to sit here and shut. listen to you. Yeah. Just keep your mouth shut. Sometime you might hmm. talk so way too much. The comments no. are closed now. They are closed. Thanks, Ray. So I'll go back to our commissioners and comments back to our commissioners and I think Randall had something to say. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, 
one thing I, I, I did want to emphasize is that I am part of the health board and I've um, become quite immersed in the workings of the, the health board. I got the official tour out at uh, the REMA building, which was depressing as all get out. But, uh, you know, those people were making the best of the situation and I was really impressed with what I saw. Uh, that staff is uh, dedicated and they'll take whatever they have and they'll do the very best they can with it. And, uh, and I do appreciate that. The um, other thing I was going to say is that, um, you know, I, in my heart, I know that what we will do, what we, our, all of our discussions uh, are based around what is best for the taxpayer, what is best for the citizen, citizen of Salina. Um, we want, we only want what's best. And, uh, you know, they're, they're sometimes best is relative, sometimes it's a moving target. Um, but we're, we always are mindful of that. I did have one constituent that um, came up to me um, uh, the other night and said, you know what, uh, my wife and I have a couple kids in uh, Kansas City and we're awful tempted to move there sometimes, but we'd like to stay in Salina and part of being in Salina is to have um, organizations, to have institutions that are second to none. Uh, you can find that in Kansas City, you can't find that everywhere. And, and he said, you know, the health department is one of those places where I think we are uh, right on up there. And we ought to keep that, uh, the health department as a stellar uh, department that is recognized along with, uh, you know, Salina Regional and, and the other health facilities that we have in town. And, and that, that impressed me. Um, and I, I think that that is something that we ought to, we ought to keep in mind because, you know, the, um, as, as years go by, we're going to have additional changes in population base and we'll have more and more people that will uh, begin to rely on our health department. And, and, and I think we're going to become more and more of a regional health department instead of just a city or a county health department. And that's going to be, become um, important, too. So I, th I just think we need to be mindful of that as we move and forward. And that's what people think of Salina as a regional health center because we mm -hmm. are in central Kansas. And mm -hmm. we do get a lot of people from different areas because we do have our cancer center. We have a state-of-the-art <laughs> hospital. We do have a good health, health department when it's up and functional. <laughs> so we do have our uh, Heartland Dermatology. I mean, we have a lot of regional draw for different services. So I do think it is important to get this ball rolling. Is there any other comments from commission? Greg, are we ready to go into another executive session before moving to our tabled item? Commissioners, real quick, if I could, just a couple of quick things. One is, is you, you heard a couple of times the thought of a mediation approach. Mm -hmm. and, and the public's not aware of this, so I think it's important to let them know that the, both the City and County Commission were approached by uh, two local attorneys that are well respected who indicated they would facilitate mediation at no cost to the entities, which is an, really an awesome community thing to offer. And we had already responded that we are interested in that. We'd have to work out some logistics, but that as an organization we're interested in doing that. I don't know, because uh, we haven't heard back, so I don't know if Slane County's agreed to it or not. I, I can't say either way. But the idea has been broached, and we have shown a willingness. And, and the importance of, 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 I think, saying that is so that the folks do know that you're willing to discuss, you know, uh, issues at that, at that table. Um, and then from this, uh, you, I wouldn't, I'm not going to ask you to, to talk any more about it before you go, and Greg has a chance to talk with you. But I will say, at this point, when you look at the sequence of events here, from the perspective of being in the negotiation seat, the only way you're in the negotiation seat is, is if you can offer enough resources to get Slane County to decide that, you know, that's a good deal and to take it. From a, from a really a legal position, you're not in a great negotiation seat with this issue. You never have been, quite honestly. Um, and, and that's okay. Everyone looks at their position and they determine if they think it's a position of strength or weakness and then you go into a negotiation. You can't do that in a public realm very easily. And the reason you can is because if you have someone over your shoulder saying, I really wish you would do that and that's the last option you want and you concede and you say, well, I'd like to do this, but I'll concede and maybe do that. That's the first option that's going to be taken by the other side. 
the point of it is negotiation isn't always a pretty process, but sometimes it has to occur. And hopefully uh, it, has to, it needs to occur in the most civil way possible. And we know that's been a, a question throughout with both sides. Um, and the point being is that, you know, your option was first that a new building that you believe was the best approach. That's what you try to negotiate. It was rejected. That's okay. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a values issue by both sides trying to, to do the best that they can. So you came back and said, okay, fine, we'll concede, but we'd like to look at another location and possibly remodel it. And that appears to be rejected. And now you're at the, the last option, which, which you're going to be speaking uh, towards, which is the possibility of saying, okay, fine, shall we go ahead and simply um, take the Saline County up on their offer, of some, sort of like a 50-50 kind of deal, and, and just get the, the roof repaired. And, and that's sort of a, could be the same, but could be a separate question from this question of dissolution. Um, in the end, that's where you're at right now. And, and my point in saying that is, well, we do have a pretty pressing timeline with the, uh, I think, with certification of the tax rates. Right. That's really important because if Slane County certifies high, pretty much forces us, in fairness to the taxpayer, to reduce ours and makes it a little difficult. If Slane County stays where they would otherwise be and we stay where we otherwise be, we still have options through the end of the year. Keep that in mind. Because you always have the ability, even if you should wish to dissolve, to say, hey, even if we dissolve, we're still. We'll, if, if the tax rates are the same, we can still pay you for the, for this year, and then next year we'll, you know, offset tax rates. So there's still that can create an opportunity to continue to discuss the issue without getting held up on August 25th. But now you're at the, that question. You still have time to deal with that question. So you could say, okay, we uh, we want to be um, together, but only under certain circumstances. You could modify those circumstances. You can eliminate those circumstances. I think this was an opportunity requested by the health department officials because they wanted, they just wanted that formal opportunity to to extend how they feel, um, and for you to be able to to feel that, you know, from them. And you've done that, and I think that's a very good thing. And I know they're appreciative of that. But you do have many options still left on the table with a fairly short time frame. And that, right. that's really what I want you to understand going into this. So, thank you. Thank you. Mayor, if I may, uh, procedurally, I don't know that I can't remember the last time we had a tabled agenda item. So, if I may, uh, because the executive <laughs> session would relate to the item that has been tabled, correct? Um, if I may, I would request that we go through the process of removing that item from the table so okay. that it is before you again, which simply takes a motion to remove that agenda item from the table. Okay. So I make that motion and I move that we remove 3-1 from the table. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to remove 3-1 from the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That has been removed. And now a request for executive session. That would be the next order of business. I might uh, provide hopefully a little bit of explanation. Uh, if it's your wish to address this in the 10-minute intervals, uh, as we have thus far in the meeting, that's certainly fine. I don't know that we'll be finished in 10 minutes. No. Um, we can use whatever interval you wish. I hope everyone knows uh, we certainly know the distinction between what can be discussed in executive session and what cannot, and we will abide by that closely, as always. Um, and it is possible that at the close of the discussion, there would be the need for formal action. Correct. Uh, but it may take a while. So uh, I guess all we can do is promise everyone we'll, uh, we'll certainly it. handle it uh, within the uh, correct context and the correct issues that can be discussed in executive session, but we do have some to talk about. Time. Um, for just the one item? Yes. Okay. Yes, it all relates to the agenda item that is before you. I would say 25 minutes. Or do you expect longer? Are we uh, well, let's start with 15. We, we'll the problem 15. is we can't reconvene any right. sooner than what we say. Right. So okay. if, if everybody doesn't mind the process, right. we can be a little more compact right. in, with the smaller intervals. Okay. okay. And a short break beforehand, before the That's executive, right? Sounds good to me. Okay. <laughs> then, uh, Madam Mayor, I move to recess into executive session for 15 minutes to discuss with legal counsel matters subject to the attorney-client privilege for the reason that public discussion of those matters 
would waive the privilege and adversely affect the city's interest in the matters and reconvene at 8.05 p.m. Second. Okay, have a motion and a second to go into executive session. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we expect any? Yes. Yeah, we do. Okay. <laughs> last time so madam mayor i would move uh to recess into executive session for 10 minutes to discuss with legal counsel matters subject to the attorney client privilege for the reason that public discussion of those matters would waive the privilege and adversely affect the city's interest in the matters and reconvene at 8 18. second PM. got a motion a second all those in favor aye, aye. aye. we will be back in 10 minutes thank you Apologies once again, Mayor. I move to recess into executive session for 10 minutes to discuss with legal counsel matters subject to the attorney client privilege for the reason that public discussion of those matters would waive the privilege and adversely affect the city's interest in the matter and reconvene at 8.32. Oh, I'm eight, sorry, 8.37. Yeah. Second. I have a motion and a second to go back into executive session for 10 more minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 In executive session. Mayor, I move uh, to recess into executive session for 10 minutes to discuss with legal counsel matters subject to the attorney client privilege for the reason that public discussion of those matters would weigh the privilege and adversely affect the city's interest in the matters and reconvene at 8.50. Seven, eight fifty-eight. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Back in the executive session. The centuries. Meeting. We are back in yep. session. It is nine p.m. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate everyone's patience. Uh, Mr. Bankston, I know you wanted to. Yes. Briefly say something. Yes, thank you, Mayor and uh, okay. Commissioners. Yeah. I appreciate your willingness to uh, spend the time uh, that it required in going through those discussions with me. And I appreciate the audience's patience as well. Mm -hmm. The, uh, I don't know, is Rita, you're still here, and I'm going to speak a little bit to, uh, I hope you'll feel free to correct me if I misspeak in any regard. Part of the reason for the extent of the discussions this evening uh, had to do with the extent to which I think uh, with regard to strictly the existing building, the city and county in our efforts and, and working on that back and forth, I think thought we had the structure of uh, an arrangement or an agreement. Uh, but we learned, uh, in fact, just basically over the weekend, that we really didn't. There was, I think, an understanding on the county's part uh, one way, uh, and it had to do with uh, utilization of health department reserve funds relative to the work to be done. Uh, the city, city commissioners, all of us, in presenting the city's uh, proposal, were speaking of city funds that we anticipated contributing to that work, but it was without anticipation of the use of health department reserve funds. That's where we recognized we, we, the agreement that we both thought we had was based on uh, a misunderstanding, frankly, I think, if that's a fair way to put it, Rita, uh, about that. So these discussions have been about trying to resolve that issue or at least present a proposal that um, we would uh, think might uh, work toward resolution of that issue. The other suggestion I'm going to make, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, is that the matter is related uh, to both the discussion of the building and uh, how we go forward in terms of the arrangement, if you will. And uh, I think that's probably where I step back 
and uh, ask that you all then take it from there. Okay, well, I'll, I'll kind of get the ball rolling here because I'll go ahead and make a motion and then we can do whatever. Okay. Um, so, Mayor, I'd uh, like to make a motion to authorize uh, the city attorney to forward a proposal to uh, the county commission um, that addresses our desire to have an agreement put together that that uh, with 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 our intention of of I've got seven points or six points here. Um, the point being uh, that these are contingent upon the health department staying intact. Item one would uh, be $500,000 $500, of uh, city funding uh, for the building. Uh, number two, uh, releasing Dr. Peichel for the county use. Uh, number three, uh, uh, receiving indemnification for, uh, for the current uh, condition of the building and being, indemnif being indemnified from the current uh, conditions of the building. And released from those claims. And, re I think. and released from any of those claims. Uh, number four, um, that uh, the five hundred thousand dollars requested by the county from the health department uh, reserve fund uh, be used for renovation purposes only. Uh, that the maintenance number five maintenance uh, be part of the health department budget. And six, that an interlocal agreement be, uh, the concept of an interlocal agreement be accepted and the details uh, worked out in the next several months. Before I second that, I just want to make sure um, when you said stay together, uh, keep the health department together, I assumed, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that you meant the city and county would continue. Uh, we would put together an interlocal agreement. I, looking at your number six, I assume that's what you meant from Correct, me. yes. Okay, so as a city and county, I, I would second that. Mayor and Commissioner, if I may, just a uh, point of clarification on number five. Uh, the thought on the utilization of the potential utilization of the uh, health department funds. Uh, I think you used the term renovation. Did that? What is the commission anticipating in terms of that? I think that's uh, of those to funds. go over and above the um, work that's being proposed by Riley Construction in the current contract. This, uh, my understanding, and my second would be that that would be used for, say, trying to, as the as the the people in the audience mentioned tonight, trying to re maybe move those offices around, make the best use of the space. Uh, we'd like to see that. That's their reserve fund. Uh, we'd like to see them utilized for an improvement on the ex existing building. Is the maker of the motion, is that consistent with yes, sir. your thought? Mm -hmm. So we have a motion. Was that a firm second? Yes. Okay, have a motion and a second. I believe we have everything properly on the six points. Really seven. 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 <laughs> I mean, yeah. Is is there a chance the clerk could call back those points to us? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe. No, no pressure. Um, a motion was made by Commissioner Blanchard, second oh. by... No one. Motion was made by Commissioner Blanchard, second by Commissioner Householder to authorize the city attorney to forward a proposal to the county commission with the desire to put an agreement together contingent upon the health department staying intact with the following conditions. $500,000 of the city funding for the building, uh, releasing of Dr. Peichel's um, report for the county use, receiving indemnification for the current condition of the building and release of any claims, 
$500,000 requested by the county from the health department reserve funds used for renovation purposes and renovation to be part of the health department budget and to work towards a future interlocal agreement. Um, Let me see if I can yes. get you back because some of those I wasn't sure we're right on. The, uh, the, the $500 for the city, uh, uh, the city's dollars, 500,000, <laughs> 500, my, my mistake, um, was for the roof related repair of Correct. the building. Correct. Okay. Um, the release is for Dr. Peichel to provide engineering services, not a report because they have all the, re they have the report they have that, the that they're, they've asked for. Um, let's see, there was a third one I have, in my note is maintenance. The, the health department budget would be responsible, the health department organization would be responsible for maintenance of the future maintenance of the building um, in lieu of a direct obligation by either the city or the county. Does that clarify the maintenance <laughs> item, <laughs> build, uh, building maintenance? Yeah. Okay, I didn't hear anything else jump out. Is, is there any other, are there any other questions? The indem indemnification of the... Well, I think he was just looking for anything that, that stuck out, weren't you? Oh, okay. When, yeah. Although that's maybe worthy of, of, okay. of mention, uh, maybe we don't want to go down this road too far. Our, uh, at least my thoughts on that would be that we, we're basically trying to bring this back to a, an equal starting point, you right. know, an investment from the county and the city and 500000 to remodel. I mean, both entities have said that they appreciate the work that's done and want them to work the best they can. So, And I, I just think that in, in, the indemnification sort of gets us away from, kind of puts us back to, I mean, is that kind of the thoughts right. on the, that? Is it? Yeah, the indemnification release would be related to the current condition of the building. Right. With the presumption that um, if both parties do agree um, through an interlocal agreement to come back together under these general terms, um, that uh, the building uh, maintenance at that point in the building condition really falls to the, uh, the health department's mm -hmm. uh, role as, a, as an entity. Um, and, and the role of the city and the county would be to appropriate funds for the budget. Well, yeah. And as I would understand, that would involve the termination of the prior agreement. Sure, sure. Agreement. sure. Mm -hmm. In our discussion about indemnification, do we need to flesh out um, part th that part of the motion to include uh, what I call mumbo jumbo? <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to cover all of the aspects of indemnification? I think that'll come in your letter, won't it? Uh, well, we'll make that point in the letter. This, this ultimately would be in the form of a settlement agreement and with releases uh, and indemnifications appropriately tailored to the ultimate agreement. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're just trying to get back on the track of outlining the proposal to see if it uh, works from the county standpoint. Right. Mm -hmm. Just trying mm -hmm. to get a good... Then we, then we come in with the mumbo jumbo. <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. Okay. Try to get a good working relationship going again. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion from Commission? Any comments from anyone out in the audience? Okay. With that, I would, uh, I have my motion in the second still. Sorry, I lost track there. I looked at the time. I was like, wow, <laughs> yeah, I just got real tired all of a sudden. Goodness, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Awesome. Thank you again, everybody. Well, thank you for coming out. Second. Oh, did you already get the motion oh, to adjourn? Motion no, yeah. To adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll second. All right. Good deal. We are adjourned. Oh.